Good evening, everybody. Welcome to your last terrific Tuesday turning point for for the month and the 2022. We should be talking about spiritual drought, but we missed that yesterday due to voice problems. But I'm better. I'm better for this one. So, 24-hour voice problem. I had had voice problems on Christmas. So, leading up to time to record the Monday videos, I had to, I had to back out because the voice was was not feeling well. So, but I had to move on, and my voice is a lot better for this one. So, but we're going to be talking about episode four, should be four thirty, but we're four twenty nine because I've happened to miss a day. And it's significant to the number 429. The current, the, the first, the first number four is my favorite NASCAR number. Name, favorite driver in NASCAR Cup Series. Four. Well, when my favorite driver, before he got to the four car, he was in the 29 car. That was his old number. And another significant to the number 29, it was, he took over after Dale Earnhardt was killed at Daytona in that, car, in that last lap crash coming around the turn three when he died on impact. But um, they couldn't use, the, or the owner at that time did not want to use, bring the three use the three again for a while and um so and he and Harvick was supposed to come up the following year he was supposed to be brought up the following year in cup well they went ahead and brought him up early and instead of the number that they chose for the car was 29 which significantly was Dale Earnhardt's age when he won when De Earnhardt won rookie of the year as a rookie when he started in in race in the I guess in the cup series or whatever when he started he was 29 years old as a rookie so that's where they got the 29 from that's the significance but he went from 29 to 4 so anytime you see the 29 and 4 together, that's the significance of the number. Current number 4, old number 29, 429. So. <laughs> so we're going to choose to rejoice today. Our beginning passage is Acts 5, 40 and 41, which will be reading in the recommended reading when we read Acts 5, 33 to 42. Our turning point is from Charles Wesley. And in our Bible reading, we're reading Revelation 5 through 9. And we should, we should, we started on Revelation, we should have started on Revelation yesterday, 1 through 4. So if you haven't read 1 through 4, and you're following along with this reading plan, go back and read 1 through 4 before you read 5 through 9. So you can catch up. Just one day, so shouldn't be too bad to catch up. So if you're excited about this, we'll smash the like button. Hitting the like button will help the video out in many different ways. And remember the like challenge for all my videos. Go back to the morning video, today's morning video, for explanation of the like challenge. So, but without further ado, let's choose to rejoice. I like it when the title has a has a flow to it when you read it. Okay. Acts 5, 40, 40 and 41. Well, re let's go ahead, turn in our Bibles to Acts 5, 33 through 42. Then we'll, we'll compare the verses. Acts 5, 33 through 42. You hear my voice already. Starting to, starting to go down. 
33 to 42, which is that last Gamma Melio's advice. Gamio's advice. When they heard this, they were furious and pl pointed, plotted to kill them. Then one in the council stood up, a Pharisee named Gamamiel, Gamiel, a teacher of the law held in respect by all people, by all the people, and commanded them to put the apostles outside for a little while. And he said to them, Men of Israel, take heed to yourselves what you intend to do regarding these men. For some time ago, the the Judas rose up, claiming to be somebody. A number of men, about four hundred, joined him. He was slain, and all who obeyed him were scattered and came to nothing. After this man, Judas of Galilee rose up in the days of the census, and drew away many people after him. He also perished, and all who obeyed him were dispersed. And now I say to you, keep away from these men, and let them alone. For if this plan or this work is of men, it will come to nothing. But it is of God, you cannot overthrow it, lest you ever been found to fight against God. And they agreed with him when they had called for the apostles and beaten them. They commanded that they should not speak in the name of Jesus and let them go. So they departed from the presence of the council rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer shame for his name. And daily in the temple and in every house they did not cease teaching and preaching Jesus as Christ. Tell them not to do it, and you do it anyway, because you're not scared. Those people were not scared about preaching the word of God, or preaching about God or Jesus. In Acts 40, 41 says, When they had called for the apostles and beaten them, they commanded that they should not speak in the name of Jesus and let them go. So they departed from the presence of the council, rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer shame for his name. So that's about basically what I read. So in the early days of the church, the apostles were arrested and beaten for sharing the good news. Yet their response was not one of anxiety or fear. Instead, they rejoiced. Why? Because they were counted worthy to suffer shame for his name. The, the apostles' joy was not dependent on their pain level or location. Their joy came from knowing that they were obeying Christ's command to share the good news of the gospel with the world. Choosing to rejoice in the midst of the stressful circumstances is not a moral reaction in our world, but it should be the Christian's response. We know the one who is sovereignly reigning over all the earth. We know the creator of the sunrise and the sunset. We know the father who cares for his children. Therefore, we can rejoice in any and all circumstances. We can say with the Apostle Paul, Rejoice in the Lord always. And again I say rejoice. Philippians 4.4 4. So rejoice today, no matter what comes your way. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Rejoice, rejoice, and again I say rejoice. Rejoice, rejoice, and again I say rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always. <clears throat> And again, I say rejoice. So they turn that they turn that verse into a song, into a little hymn. <laughs> I, I learned that one when I was helping a lady in my church. She used to do a Bible club once a week for some of the younger kids. She used to Bible club, and that was one of the so one of the little little courses that she she did every now and then. So. Her name was Ida Hammond. Thank you, Miss Ida, for teaching me that song. Now I remember it every time I, I see that verse. <laughs> so Charles Wesley says, Lift up your heart. Lift up your voice. Rejoice again, I say. Rejoice. 
Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. <laughs> so coming up tomorrow, in your last glorious hump day, Wednesday turning point of the year, for December 28, 2022, we're going to be talking about the power, learning about the power of God's word, beginning with Psalm 119, 97, which we'll be reading in the recommended reading, Psalm 119, 97 through 104. Our turning point is from Michelle Bore Chard, Chart. B O R C H A R D T, however it's pronounced. There's a footnote at um, the end of the middle paragraph. So it's right there where my finger's at. The middle paragraph. And our Bible reading, we're continuing on with Revelation 10 through 13. The next four. And then the next four. On Thursday, and two on Friday, two on Saturday, or three on Saturday, excuse me, and then Sunday we'll start over with Genesis in the first of, on the first of January, because this weekend we have a turning point video on Saturday, and a turning point video on Sunday, like we did back in at the end of April, the start of May, April ended on Saturday, May started on Sunday. So we had a turning point, had a weekend video on Saturday, and a weekend video on Sunday. We ended one one weekend series on, on Saturday, and we started a new one on Sunday. And that's what we'll do again on this one. That's what we got coming up. So, so stay tuned to that. I'll get to that later tonight, but you'll see that tomorrow. So, so I love you. I appreciate you. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Keep on keeping on and trusting God, and I'll keep you safe and all you say and do in 2022 and beyond. And until tomorrow, peace out, everybody. So long, farewell. Come back tomorrow for your last glorious hump day, Wednesday of the year. And we'll see what God has in store for us tomorrow. Including the last The Series video of the year with number 133 in part 30, part 930, 943, part 1. In the name of the Lord Jesus, beginning with Matthew 121 from Henry M. Morris. Part two, hopefully after one, we're going to be learning, we're going to be talking about in all our dealings from Marvin Williams derived from 2 Corinthians 1, 12 through 16. And tomorrow night's episode 9 or 4, 430, the power of God's word. Beginning with Psalm 9, 119, 97, which we'll be reading in the recommended reading. Psalm 119, 97 through 104. Michelle Borchardt, B-O-R-C-H-A-R-D-T, with a turning point. And then there's a footnote at the end of the second paragraph. And then we're reading Revelation 10 through 13. So stay tuned for those. I'll get to those later tonight. But you'll see those tomorrow. So, with that said, I love you. I mean, with that said, God bless everyone, and I'll see y'all tomorrow. Ha <laughs> ha! And one, one little uh, Christmas gift I got, or that I bought for my, I actually, my mom thought I bought it for her. Something with him. But you see? <laughs> But me and him, we out. Goodbye.